we give God some more praise real quick? Make some noise for Jesus. Hallelujah. God is good in this place. Ah, oh, isn't it good to be in the house of the Lord? Oh, come, isn't it good? Okay, look at somebody next to you and just say around you, surrounding you, and just say, it is good to see you tonight. It is. It is. Look at the other side. Make sure you cover them too. Let them know it is good to see you tonight. Let's go. It's good to see you tonight. Look, I got my Holly Glory Air Force Ones. Y'all, look at that. Look at that right there. Look at that. Justin Fudge Petty hooked me up. Y'all know Fudge. He, I, he's not here tonight. He's at the San Diego Fair is what he told me. But I told him, I was like, bro, thank you for the kicks. I'm rocking them, and I'm going to do this in them. Let's go. <laughs> Y'all are crazy. Y'all are crazy. Y'all came ready tonight. Y'all came ready tonight. So I'm, I'm excited to just talk to you about the word of God. God, and I, I just want to encourage you in this as we get into the word. You are here on purpose for purpose. Amen. No accidents in the kingdom of heaven. And we say that every week. There are no accidents in the kingdom of heaven. You may have accidentally agreed to show up. Mm -hmm. I know it happens. You was like, uh, maybe, and it turned into a, oh, most definitely. And now you're here. I get it. But you need to understand that God has something for you. You need to know that your God, God, the creator, the one who created you with the weird little ways that you have, he created you and he wants to know you. He wants you to know him and he wants to know that he is, wants you to know that, you are ve- that he is very intentional with what he does. And so you are here on purpose for purpose. Amen. God's got something for you. He's got something for us. I am excited. It was exciting to have Paige back. Amen? We love you, Paige. We absolutely love you. So blessed. We have an amazing team at the Jordan. Um, Like, my goodness. And they absolutely love all y'all. You know, y'all crazy. You know y'all crazy, too. Look at somebody say you crazy real quick. But it's one of those loving crazies, right? It's one of those like, yeah, you got it. We crazy together as a family. Amen? We crazy together. So we are blessed. Uh, As you all know, or some of you, this may be your first time, we are in a series called the Soundtrack Soundtrack of Psalms. And what we're doing is we are going through the psalms, the hymns, the praises of God's people. And there are, we have a purpose behind this series. And the purpose are some peas. Who remembers the peas? Anybody remember the the peas? It's going to help you with your, enhance your praise life, your prayer life, and what else? Your problems, your approach to problems life. That's what we are believing for in the book of Psalms. Y'all are so good. Y'all be listening on a Thursday. Let's go. Yes, we, this Psalm series, the hope and the prayer is that it enhances your prayer life. So that you can pray to God. And sometimes you don't have the words to pray to God. The psalmist. You can borrow the words of the psalmist. So it can help your prayer life. It can help your praise life. We are reading psalms of lament. We are reading psalms of worship. Psalms of praise. Psalms that just declare that God is king. And his new covenant is an everlasting covenant. So praise. Hopefully you can. It it, it just inspires and encourages a fresh praise in your spirit and then problems raise your hand if you just got one or two problems you got a few problems hey man we all got a few problems I know and yes you do baby you got just a few I know and here's the thing as we get into the book of Psalms you know what we realize they got problems too Mm, the psalmist have so many problems so I don't know if it's I don't know about you but for me it feels good that I'm not the only one in the room with a problem, amen? And so it can help your approach to problems, how you see problems, how you approach problems, how, how how you problem solve in the midst of problems. That's what this series is doing for us. And this is a special psalm to me because, um, this is the psalm that the Lord gave me at the beginning of the year. I don't know if you all remember, those of you that were here, uh, last year, 
what we do in the fall is we kind of go through a little uh, a, a season leading up to the end of the year where we are intentionally trying to hear from God. We're intentionally trying to see, Lord, what are you saying? What are you speaking to us for the rest to go into this new year? What might you be saying? And we have cards, and we're going to do that again this year. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, but on my card, Psalm 4211 was the word that God gave me. Psalm 4211. And, um, and we'll read the whole psalm in just a few moments. But this psalm, um, it's, been, it's been fun looking at this psalm because it has been a psalm that just I've been laying myself down in. I have just been like, oh, Lord, why so downcast? Oh, my soul, hope in the Lord. It's like I'm just trying to resuscitate. Hope in the Lord. Put your hope in the Lord. So this psalm is near and dear to my heart, especially in this year. And I have a bunch of notes for you that, so I just want you to be ready to take notes. I'm going to try to inform you. There are some slides that are going to help you, but there are a bunch of things that I just really want you to grab hold of, hold on to, and be able to type in your notepad or write it down, whatever that looks like for you. I want you to just be ready for that. So as we get ready to go to Psalm 42, if you have your Bibles, open up, head there. And I want you to kind of just sit back, relax a little bit, because um, we're going to listen to it first. Before we read, we're going to listen to it. So sit back, relax, and listen to Psalm 42. Hallelujah. That is Psalm 42. And first of all, did y'all feel the bass when the psalm hit? The bass, I was like, ooh, is that the Holy Spirit? It's the bass. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Psalm 42, I love this psalm. This is a psalm of lament. This is a psalm of lament, and if you got one of our Jordan bulletins um, and you are taking notes there, um, the genre of this psalm is a psalm of lament. So Psalm 42, it is a psalm of lament, and it's, it's, by, it's written by um, the son of Korah, the sons of Korah. And this, the thing that's interesting about this is so many of the psalms that we've read already are written by King David. But this is the start of the new book in the book of Psalms. Um, if you were here last week, um, the book of Psalms is separated into five separate books. 
five separate books. And Psalm 42 is the end of the first book and the beginning of the second book. And right at the beginning of this book, we see that this book is written by the worshipers. Written by those that led worship um, and, and at the temple and led people into the presence of God. And the context of this psalm, it said that it was probably written when King David, King David had a son. His third son, I think his name is Absalom. Now, Absalom grew up, had long hair, and he's super handsome dude. Grew up, and what he did was he overthrew his dad to try to become king. So King David found himself running, abandoning his kingdom, and his son is rallying the troops, saying, are you coming with me? Are you going with my dad? If you go with my dad, you dead. Dad, dead. Me, I got you. This is what's going on in this time and in this season. So the writer of this psalm is probably very estranged from the place they used to be. They're used to being in a place where they can easily go into worship. They're used to being around people just like here in the Jordan where we are of one mind and one God and ready to worship. And, and I, I love the song we just sang. Can you imagine with all the faith in the room what the Lord can do? Mm, I love that. All of the faith in the room. Can you imagine what God can do with your faith, combined with your faith, with your faith, with your faith? Well, the sons of Korah, these worship leaders, aren't in the ideal environment to worship their God. They aren't in the ideal environment to worship their God. Some descriptions of the sons of Korah is the cry of one who is not serving God in the capacity that he once was. They used to be leading worship, and now they're no longer leading the people into the worship of the one true God. It's the cry of one who is not serving God in the way they once were. It's the cry of one who longs to be in the house of the Lord again. It's the cry of one who longs to be in the presence of God. And that's what we see in and throughout the book of Psalms is it's so many people just longing for the presence of God. God, I need you. God, I want you. Don't take your presence away from me. And here's what I just want to say to us as a Jordan family. I believe with all my heart that we are being introduced more and more more to Jesus, to the God whose presence we will beg for. The closer we get to him, the more we know him, the more it's like, Lord, I don't need nobody else. I just need you. I know it was nice hugging up on her. It was nice hugging up on him. It was nice. We was giving googly eyes and just, mm, hey, what's crack and they thought I was weird, but it was so nice. But Lord, I don't need that because all I need is you. This is the journey of the song. These are the cries of God's people in this time and in this season. They're longing for the presence of God. It's the cry of believers under spiritual depression, longing for God's divine presence. It's the cry of someone who's struggling with doubts and fear. It's the cry of someone who's struggling with doubts and fear, but in the midst of struggling with doubts and fear, they are trying their best to stand in faith, stand and believe and know that our God is alive, that our God is here, that our God is good. Come what may, the circumstances are wild right now, but I just trust in the Lord. I believe in the Lord. This is the cry of the psalmist in Psalm 42. The psalmist is, is up and down. Have you, ever, have, have, have you ever seen a seesaw? And it's like up and down and you bouncing. And then if you're like me and you got kids and you're on the seesaw with the kids, you sit at the bottom and you keep your kid up at the top and they just like, Daddy, let me down. And then you jump up a little bit and then let them down a little bit, but then pop them back up and then they fall off and you get in trouble with your wife. See, those, there's moments in the sermon where it gets real, amen? But it's a seesaw. 
You see the seesaw of emotion. You see this seesaw. And in this seesaw, we see that the psalmist fluctuates between songs and sobs. We see that the psalmist fluctuates between hope and despair. The psalmist fluctuates between confidence and collapse, fear and faith. Fear and faith. And I wonder, I wonder if there is anybody in the room tonight besides me. Okay, I know I relate. Mm, Yes, I do. I'm like this often. I'm like, Lord, help. He ain't going to help. Lord, help. He ain't going to help. Lord, help. Where you at? Lord, help. Where you at? You know, like that. That's just me, not you. I know you're perfect, good Christian boys and girls. I know it. I know it. But this is, I, I just wonder, is there anybody in the room that can relate to maybe the seesaw of fear and faith? I wonder if there's anybody in the room that could relate to maybe the seesaw of I'm singing songs to the Lord and I'm thankful for what he's doing, but I just got done crying my eyes out before I walked into this room. I wonder if there's anyone who can be that real. Because here's the thing the psalmist is. The psalmist is that honest. The psalmist is that real. And that's one of the reasons why I love the psalm so much is because it's speaking the language that I live in. Oh, it's speaking the language of this side of eternity. Oh, can I tell you, family, there is going to be a time, there is going to be a season, there is going to be a day where there will be no pain, there will be no sickness, there will be no disease. We are going to be on the other side of eternity, and we're going to be like, hey, Jesus, Jesus. I'm going to be looking at Paul like, show me the thorn in your side, bro. What was it? What was it? I'll be looking at Peter like, Peter, what was it like to walk on the water, bro? Like, all of these things. Things are going to happen, but not today. <laughs> what happens today is this. Noah, can you give me the, the, the slide of the structure of the psalm? Here's what happens today. Check this out. Next slide, maybe. Next slide, maybe. There. No, next slide, maybe. <laughs> Next slide, maybe the, the structure, the, the lament, the, the n- next slide, maybe. No, we're going to get there. We're going to get there. Nope, next slide, maybe. Yeah, ne- nope. Okay, there is no next slide. So, this slide, sound, that's the, <laughs> so, the structure of this psalm, the structure of this psalm, if you take notes, write this down. It's. Lament, hope, lament, hope, lament, hope, lament, hope. That's the structure of this psalm. Lament, hope, lament, hope, lament, hope, lament, hope. That's what we are reading. We are reading the psalmist and what the psalmist does. And here's what's bananas. The psalmist spends more time lamenting than he does hoping. (laughs) Holy glory. Let's go. I got the great. That's that's my guy. This is it. Take a picture of that. (laughs) This right here. This is the structure of this psalm. And as you can see, the psalmist spends more time in the place of lament than he does hope. And it's bananas because for every two, three, or four verses of lamentation, how much hope does he have? One verse. One verse of hope. There's only one verse of hope. There's only one verse for every four verses of lamenting. And the reason why I think it's important that we see that 
is because some of us think that we are failing as Christians because so often we find ourselves sad. Some of us think that I've let God down because I'm, I'm, I'm depressed. Some of us think I'm not, I'm not living out my faith well because I have so many seasons of just being down and just being sad. And I just want to invite you in and I just want to say welcome to the Psalms. Welcome to walking out our faith on this side of eternity. That's what we're doing. You are not alone in that. You have not failed God. You have not let God down. God has not turned his back on you simply because you are in a season of lament. The majority of the Psalms are about lamenting. Because the psalmists find themselves in situations and circumstance that question their, that make them question how good is our God? Is our God actually faithful? And we see this right here. And as and I, I'm going to read through this. We're going to go lament to hope, lament to hope, lament to hope. But as we are getting into this psalm. I want, you to, I want you to hold on to this, and this is just a few things that we need to understand from Psalm 42. The first thing is we need to understand who we are. If you take notes, write that down. Understand who we are. Understand who we are. The next thing is understand who God is. Understand who God is. And then from the psalm, from this particular psalm, and really all of the psalms, we are encouraged to remember who we are. Remember who we are. And remember who God is. So understand who we are, and in that understanding, understand who God is. And then as we walk this faith out, we remember who we are, and in remembering who we are, we have to remember who God is. Now we're going to unpack it a little bit right now. Lamentations 42 I'm going to read verses 1 through 4. We're going to read this lament section. This is the lament section. It says this, As the deer pants for streams of water, my soul pants for you, my God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When can I go and meet with God? Verse 3, My tears have been my food day and night. Let me just pause on that. Come on, somebody. Who has been there? Mm -hmm. Where well, you just grubbing on tears. You accidentally fasting. You accidentally fasting because all you drinking is tears. It's a water fast and it's your tears. Who's been there? Oh, my goodness. This is scripture. This is what the word of God says. The word of God, it says, my tears have been my food day and night while people say to me all day long, where is your God? Whew. Where is your God? Isn't it hard when the question rises up, where is my God? And you're like, I don't even know. Where, where is he? I believe, however. I don't know where he's at. Because he certainly doesn't feel like he's here with me. We, 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 we are now estranged from the land that we lived in, the place of worship that we were able to be. We can't go there anymore because if we go there, we will die. So we can't go there anymore. So where will I go to meet God is what the psalmist is saying. I'm afraid for my life is what the psalmist is saying. Verse 4, it says, these things I remember... <clears throat> As I pour out my soul, how I used to go to the house of God under the protection of the mighty one with shouts of joy and praise among the festive throng. 
also the psalmist is like, I remember how it used to be. I remember I used to go to the house of the Lord, and I used to worship the Lord. We used to have a good time. We used to dance. We used to have our hands up. We used to be like, can you imagine with all the faith in the room, what the Lord can do, what the Lord can do. We used to do that. This is what we used to do. And the psalmist, in the midst of a hard season, in the midst of sadness, in the midst of depression, in the midst of this seesaw of song and sob, we see the psalmist remembering. Understand and remember, understand and remember, understand and remember, understand and remember. Verse 5, this is where the hope comes in. Oh, we got through four verses, and all we eating is our tears. Who can a brother get some hope? Like for you, if you got th- this, this may be your first experience with me. Um, for me, sitting in hard emotions is very hard for me. I used to be that guy that, you know, would just be like, well, hey, oh, oh, happy day. Come on. But, uh, you know, uh, Damien, uh, I just, I'm hurting and I'm in pain. Oh, are you, brother? Yeah. Um, well, praise the Lord anyway. What? What? Now, here's the reality. There's a level of truth to that. But the reality on an empathetic human level is people didn't necessarily need me to run to a place of worship. They needed me to sit in their hard with them. And what I realized, too, is I need people to sit in hard spaces with me. When I'm lamenting, I need people to sit in hard spaces with me. But it's hard for me because it's like I don't want to deal with these hard emotions. I don't want to just drink my tears. They salty and they no sugar in them. (laughs) Right? But health, health says I need a community of people. I need a life group or or I need my team that I serve here at the Jordan with to to, to sit with me in this hard space. See, See, because I'm experiencing hard doesn't mean that I don't believe in God. Because I am struggling in my faith in a moment doesn't mean that I will struggle in my faith for a lifetime. But maybe, just maybe if someone sat with me in that struggle and I can borrow what Paul said, I can borrow their faith for a season because I don't have faith right now. I can borrow their faith for a season. And when the season comes for somebody to need to borrow my faith, I'll be a little bit better to let them get in on my faith. That's what we're seeing in the psalm. Verse 5, this is where the hope comes in, and I love it. It says, why, my soul, are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? Has anybody been there where you were just like, why am I so sad? Or why am I so angry? You're probably really angry because, like, your anger, your sadness turned to anger, and you don't really want to deal with the sadness because you think that tears and being sad makes you seem weak, when actually, really, it's really one of the strongest ways that you can express yourself because it makes you very vulnerable and opens you up to the healing that you maybe didn't even know that you needed. But you have to fight through the, ah, and just be like, uh, and let God come in and be like, raw, and then you're like, can you imagine? with all of the faith. I'm just trying to be spiritually healthy and mentally healthy as well, amen? (laughs) The psalmist talks to himself, "Why, why so downcast in my soul? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Savior and my God. I love it because the psalmist reminds himself where his hope should be. He understands and remembers. There's an underst- there's a level of understanding that you and I come to about ourselves in seasons of lamenting. Lamenting, l- lament- lamentations, lamenting is just an expression of deep sadness. It's an expression of deep worry. That's what lamenting means. That's what lamenting is. 
And in these seasons of lamentation, in these seasons of lamenting, you and I, we come to an understanding of ourselves and of God that we may have never had. This next few verses of lament, check this out, verse 6. My soul is downcast within me, therefore I will remember you from the land of the Jordan. The heights of Hermon from Mount Mazar, deep calls to deep in the roar of your waterfalls. All your waves and breakers have swept over me. Has anybody ever been in the ocean? Yeah, y'all been in the ocean, San Diego. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I'm a wetsuit all season, brother. I just want you to know that. Um, it could be 102 degrees outside. I am in a wetsuit, <laughs> okay? That's just me. Don't judge me. Pray for me later. So have you ever been in a wave? And a wave smacks you. Now, I'm not talking about just, I'm talking about where it felt like your arm was over here, your leg was over here, your foot was over here, and you're like, and in your mind, you're like, ah, but you can't yell because you'll drown. So, right, you, the wave just boom, you're like, and you just got to wait for it to pass. And then another one says, smacks you, and you're like, it's over, it's over. <laughs> okay, this is just me in the ocean. <laughs> Somebody help me swim. That's what the psalmist is describing as the emotion that they're experiencing right now. Wave after wave after wave after wave. Hit wave after wave after wave. And they are discombobulated by the intensity of every wave that keeps smacking them. The waves just keep smacking them. And then we have hope again. It says, by the day, the Lord directs his love. At night, his song is with me. A prayer to the God of my life. Again, he reminds himself of who God is. He understands in the midst of understanding himself, he understands who God is. The last part of lament says this, um, verse 9. I say to my God, my rock, why have you forgotten me? Why must I go about mourning, oppressed by the enemy? Oh, look at this. Listen to this. L or read it or look at it while you're reading it or listen while you read. We could do all that. Verse 10, this is crazy. My bones suffer mortal agony as my foes taunt me, saying to me all day long, where is your God? Oh, somebody, you have been tormented. You sit here tonight and you have been tormented with thoughts and you've asked, where is my God? And I just want to encourage you in the fact that you are in the right place to experience, to understand yourself and to understand the God who created you. The last part of hope is he encourages himself again in this. He says, why, my soul, are you downcast? Why is hell disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Savior and my God. The two things, the two things, or maybe four things that I said we get from this psalm is we understand ourselves, we understand God. We remember who we are, we remember who he is. If you take notes, write this down. Understand who you are, you were created with a deep desire to be in relationship with God. You have to understand who you are. You were created with a deep desire and a longing to be in relationship with the creator. Now, what you feel that with outside of Jesus, I can't say that. I don't know, but, but I know that I've been on, on, in seasons of life where I've tried to feel this God-shaped hole with other things. But you and I, we have to understand about ourselves that we're created to be in relationship with the creator. That's why the psalmist says at the very beginning, beginning, my soul pant, desires and pants after you like a deer after water. My soul, that's how much you and I are created to be in relationship with God. And you have to understand this about yourself. If you take notes, write this down. Some of y'all are going to be very hesitant to write this down, but I just want to encourage you. Safe space, amen. Do it with me on three. One, two, three. Safe space. Okay, all that means is safe space. 
Write this down. This is what you have to understand about yourself. You are needy. Mm. Some of y'all's best friend just said amen. <laughs> Somebody sitting next to you said amen, you know you are. And that person that you just hear is like, no, it's you. No, it's you. All right, I'll take it to me. I'm needy. I'll, tell, I'll keep it real with you. When it comes to God, I am so needy. I need to know that God likes me on a consistent basis. I am not playing. I need to know that God loves me on a consistent basis. I need to know. You have to understand about yourself. You and I, we are very needy. We are created with a deep desire to be in relationship with God. And you, this is going to be hard for some of y'all too, you need to understand about yourself. You don't know it all. We don't know it all. You can acquire all of the degrees that you desire to acquire. That sounded good. You can, but you don't know it all. We don't know it all. We can get experience doing things. We can acquire knowledge. We can read. I encourage that. We should be learning. We should be, but we don't know it all. But we were created to be connected to the God who does. If you take notes, write this down. Understand your truth does not equal God's truth. See, the psalmist was living in a truth, but that truth was not. Now, and it was real. The reality of that was real. But, but just because you don't see God moving, it does not mean that he's not moving. Just because you don't see him moving doesn't mean that he's absent. Understand who God is. Understand who God is. So as we understand who we are, we have to understand who God is. And can I give you a name of God? A name of God is Yahweh. Ooh, say Yahweh. Ooh, Yahweh. What that simply means is Lord. That just means Lord. Jesus, God, Yahweh, the Lord, Yahweh. And what does Yahweh mean? And here's, okay, let me nerd out for just a few minutes. Micah's like, hey, I'm playing the good stuff, so let's go. But let, let me just nerd out for just two seconds. Check this out. The first book of, 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 of Psalms, the first collection of books of Psalms are written to Yahweh the Lord. And that means I am who I am. That's who he told Moses when Moses was like, who do I say sent me? God is like, say I am who I am. I will be what I will be. I am the one who is. When we talk about Yahweh, we're talking about the self-existent one, a all self-sufficient God. All others are dependent upon him for life and breath and existence. This is Yahweh. He is dependent upon no one. This is our God. This is the God that you and I are created to be in connection with. Yahweh. He's he don't need nobody. He's self-sufficient. He is Yahweh. And so the first 42 books of Psalms are entitled to Yahweh. Yahweh. See, when, as you and I get to understand ourselves more, we understand that um, we are have a desire to be connected to the creator. We understand that we are very needy. We understand that we don't know it all. We understand that we experience truth, a truth, but, but, but Jesus is the way, the truth, the life, and we have to walk in that so we can, uh, we can get connected to his truth, the truth that he is, and submit our truth to that. And as we get to know ourselves, we get to know and understand Yahweh. And then the next one is Elohim. Say Elohim. Elohim. My, my, my son would probably say, God is Elohim. I'm like, you're dumb. You're dumb, son. You're dumb. Elohim. <laughs> it's spelled that way, too. That's why it's kind of cute and funny. Okay. <laughs> Elohim. So, so this psalm that we're reading is addressed to Elohim. Signed, Elohim. 
So whenever you hear the psalmist saying God, the psalmist is saying Elohim. And what does that mean? The one of strength. Our God is the one of strength. Power or effect, Elohim, is the infinite, all-powerful God who shows by his works that he is the creator, the sustainer, the supreme judge of the world. That's where you get names like El Elyon, which means God most high. El Roy means God who sees. El Eloi, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? That's what Jesus says on the cross. Eloi, Eloi, Lebek Semethi, why have you forsaken me? This Jesus is calling on the Father. This is who we have The opportunity to get to know through the song. Yahweh, Elohim. And, and we have to remember that you and I, we are prone to forget. So we understand who we are. We understand who God is, Yahweh, Elohim. And then we have to remember that we are prone to forget. Life has a way of making me forget how good God has been. Life has a way of making me forget that God faithfully showed up for me. We are prone to forget. And I just want to encourage somebody in this. God has not forgotten about you. And that's what happens in that line of hope with the psalmist. The psalmist is, is, is living in the reality of themselves. Like, this is how this feels. This is what's going on. And they're not denying the reality, but in the midst of acknowledging that reality, they acknowledge the reality that Elohim, the all-powerful God, the self-sustaining God, Yahweh, the one who says, I am that I am, I will be what you need me to be, that is the God that I am connected to. I have to remember that. I have to remember that. And in remembering that, you remember that he is faithful. He is faithful. And he is worth you putting your hope in. He's worth you putting your hope in. And all hope is 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 expectantly waiting for God to act. Hope, expectantly waiting for God to act. I love this psalm too, and I'll end right here with this. Is This psalm blesses me because in the midst of the reality of the psalmist, the psalmist just gives us one thing, that we can do as we understand ourselves and understand God. And as we remember who God is and remember who we are. He tells us to remind, he reminds himself of a time when he experienced the goodness of the Lord. And in remembering that time, it gave him faith in this time to believe for the next time. Hey, hey, oh, somebody in here, you need to remember. You need to just remember the time before when God came through so that you can have faith now that he will continue to do what he said he would do and give you hope for the future outcome that you are believing him for. The very last thing is this. Put your hope in God. That's what the psalmist says. And can I tell you, it's a God that, not, not, not a God that you, you tape scriptures together and you, you kind of create this God that you've pieced all these awesome scriptures together, that kind of you've created your own God. But it's Yahweh. It's Yahweh. It's Elohim. It's the all-sufficient God. The God that proves by his works that there is nothing too difficult or impossible for him to do. Understand yourself. Understand God.
Remember who he is and remember who we are. We are needy. Isn't it dope to know that our God knew that already? And he said, all that you need is found in me. So I have a courageous prayer I want to pray with you before we go into worship. This prayer is a, it's just a real prayer. I'm doing a devotional in the Psalms, and the prayer, in the, this is the prayer that was in the devotional, and I was like, dang, that's real. So if you wouldn't mind standing on your feet for me. Stretch it out. Hallelujah. Get it. Get it. And I just want to encourage you to bow your heads with me. And try not to be distracted by anyone around you. I just want to pray this prayer over all of us. Lord, as we come before you in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you that you're here right now. We thank you that you love us and that you're for us. And I just speak this prayer over all of us. Lord, in dark times, I feel I get little out of going to the throne of grace in prayer. But God, I ask in Jesus' name that you give us strength to go to the throne of grace and stay there anyways. God, in our dark times where we feel like we gain nothing from coming to the throne of grace in prayer, again, will you give us strength to come to your throne of grace and stay there. We need it. We need you. Your grace is sufficient. We thank you for it now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And if you believe it, let me hear you say amen.